Five now to Uxbridge, north of London. Uh, Oliver Whitfield, Mia Chitch, used to be Boris Johnson's constituency, of course. He's there for Talk TV. Oliver, very good morning to you. Very good morning. So, um, you're testing the, the waters out there today. The, the, the ULES came in at midnight uh, last night, I suppose. Um, people won't really physically see anything, particularly. Uh, but what have you found out there on the streets this morning? And the vast majority of people that we're speaking to, Mike, are totally against this. We've been out asking multiple people all morning. The closest we've got to anybody giving any sort of support to this widening of the ULES scheme, which means that those older, more polluting vehicles now have to pay £12.50 a day to come into that inner cordon within the M25, was somebody who said that he didn't have any opinion on it. He was yet to weigh up all of his answers. Now, when you look at this scheme, it is mostly going to target those who've got those older, more polluting vehicles. Mostly, that will be tradespeople. They come in and out of the M25 corridor. They go to different jobs. That means it's going to be a £12.50 a day charge if they haven't upgraded their vehicle to something that is less polluting. Here's the view of one tradesperson and he was clearly unhappy with the charges that are coming. Ridiculous. Really, really, I'm really angry about it. Um, I think it's going to affect a lot of people, a lot of business people who struggle anyway um, and their vehicles have got to be changed and it's just I don't see why, to be honest. I know the Mayor of London says it's for our lungs, but look at the tube in London. Has he cleaned that up? Unfortunately, that wasn't the tradesperson there. That was one woman who had had to spend money to change her car. She said they were told by the government previously that they had to switch from petrol to diesel because that was more environmentally friendly. Now she's had to go back to a petrol vehicle. But she said that the costs involved were absolutely astronomical and that the scrappage scheme just didn't give them enough money. Let's see now, though, if we can hear from that tradesperson that I was mentioning earlier on. I think it's disgusting. It really is. Like they, they're talking about pollution, like in this area, when I've had planes flying over my head for 57 years. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just a total joke. And like I say, most of the vehicles that they're saying, because it's coming up on the telly, all cars over 16 years old, it's rubbish. It's about the emissions that come out of the car, not the age of the vehicle. But the, like I say, like my my mate's mum, she's got to get rid of her car, £2,000 crappy scheme, what is she going to buy with £2,000? You can't buy a car that's compliable with the £2,000, so it's going to put people in debt. I've got an old boy who lives up the road from me, he's getting a new car, but he's not ready. He can't go shopping now, because he, if he does go shopping, it's cost him another £12.50 just to go to the supermarket. It's just, it's not right. Mike, the scheme has been panned by the Transport Secretary, Mark Harper. He appeared on Talk TV earlier on. He said that the touted aim from the London Mayor's office, which is to make the air cleaner, to protect people's health, that that actually the improvement that will come from this widening of the scheme is negligible. He says it's the latest salvo in the war on motorists by Labour. The Mayor's office is insistent, though, that this will reduce the amount of deaths due to pollution every year and they say that the conservatives are cherry picking which battles that they are fighting because there are different clean air schemes around the uk in other different cities and yet it seems that they've only taken umbrage with the one in london the london mayor's office keen to point out that it was actually a conservative mayor a certain mr boris johnson from this seat here in Uxbridge, which he used to occupy, who rolled it out back in 2019. Yeah, which was a much smaller scheme, of course, and it was all about central London. Uh, Oliver, thanks very much indeed. We'll come back to you uh, later on in the show. Oliver Whitfield Midge is reporting in from Uxbridge, where the verdict, basically, on the out rolling, uh, the rolling out, I should say, of uh, ULES uh, is pretty unpopular, it would seem. Let's talk to Susan Hall, uh, who is, of course, the Police and Crime Committee Chair at the London Assembly for the Tory Party, also a Tory Party mayoral candidate who will hopefully unseat. Mr Khan uh, come the next election. Susan, good morning to you.
Good morning, Mike. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. So, I mean, apparently, uh, this is about as popular as, um, well, I'm not really going to say what I was thinking of saying, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, it's, you know, people are saying, well, of course, it was Boris Johnson that brought it in. Well, no, Boris Johnson brought it in uh, to sort of have, have an effect on central London. You know, Sadiq Khan is expecting people to make central London cleaner by paying a charge to drive around the outskirts of central London. Well, and the big difference, Mike, we, you and I both know this, in central London, you can just walk down the end of the road and get a, a train right. or a bus, and it's easy to get around without a vehicle. In outer London, it isn't. No. So it's a, it's a completely different thing. This is a very bad day for Londoners because all this is is a tax grab from our deeply unpopular mayor. Yes, exactly right. But an awful lot of people are, 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 are sort of up in arms about it, so much so that they're saying, never mind the fact that, you know, they're going to try and charge people, we just might not pay the fine. And we've already seen a couple of legal cases being won against the mayor uh, from people who have said, look, if there's no sign, for example, in an area, then basically uh, it's not valid. If, it's, if there's no sign that says you're going to have to pay a fine, uh, the fine may not be valid. So at the end of the day, I'm afraid there may be a bit of a sort of... Um, people's revolt here well I, I i think there may well be we'll have to wait and see i mean i have made it absolutely clear if i become mayor on may the 2nd next year i will stop the ulo's expansion on day one yeah. it's nothing but a tax grab and i feel so sorry the gentleman that you've just had on the vt the um tradesman i yeah. mean for goodness sake everything he said it, we'd have to agree with and i do feel sorry for people that cannot afford to replace their vehicles and very often it is older people that need their vehicles to go to the supermarket or hospital uh, etc it's it's a damn disgrace if mm. you ask me and Sadiq Khan is not listening to any Londoners and that's what he should do right. as mayor, you should be listening to what Londoners are saying and he seems to be incredibly arrogant about his view doesn't he because anyone who disagrees with him immediately gets kind of labeled as some kind of nutter conspiracy theorist you know COVID denier whatever you like uh, he lumps everybody in together uh, he's been falsifying the data uh, he's paid 800,000 pounds of public money uh, to Imperial College to do some data, to produce data for him, which is dodgy to say the least. I mean, he seems to think that London is his kind of personal fiefdom. Yes, and I think he's getting worse. I mean, he mustn't be given a third term, that's for sure, because goodness knows what he'd impose upon all of us then. Uh, it's time for a change. It's time to get me in there, Mike, to put in some common sense policies. Yeah, it absolutely is. And I mean, as far as the um, uh, the people that you speak to are concerned, I mean, some of the outward boroughs, like you're in Harrow, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, I mean, Harrow, I think, was one. Um, certainly down uh, towards Bexley, there was another. You know, down in parts of Surrey, there was another. Where people who run the councils are just sim are similarly unhappy about it and feel as if this has been forced upon them without even their kind of um, permission being given. Well, that's right. Um, Harrow, Hillingdon, Bexley and Bromley, uh, as well as uh, Surrey, but were uh, absolutely against it because they're listening to their residents. They're listening to Londoners and we do not want it. It's not needed. And his own impact assessment told him that it was going to make virtually no difference to air quality whatsoever. So it's quite clear the only reason this is going in is for a tax grab 200 million pounds apparently is going or they're assuming they will get from revenues that's 200 million pounds off the back of the poorest londoners small businesses and charities it's totally unacceptable but as always sadiq khan doesn't listen mm, he really doesn't just to move on from from the ulus for a moment 